and good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Welcome to the first meeting of 2021. And of course, we're hoping that it's going to be so much better than 2020. I have a, our agenda out here. And one of the things, like I always look at this agenda and always think that the first thing is going to be the pledge. But according to our agenda, there's a little bit of club business. I guess there's some essential things that uh, people that have used this agenda in the past. I'm going to take just a, a minute to uh, address situation, something that's very important to us. So I was contacted this morning with a request to reschedule today's program on inclusion based on the events of yesterday at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Will and I talked at length this morning, and we are in agreement that it is important to go forward with today's program even in light of those events. In fact, we both feel that it is very important and timely that Jen present her program on inclusion today. Yesterday's events were an extreme and radical example of a divided country, divided by politics, just like the country is divided by race, religion, gender, ethnicity, sexual preference, and that list goes on. Yes, yesterday's events were elicited by a president of the United States, appalling in its own right, but the divide existed long before Mr. Trump. His only leverage, he only leveraged it to achieve authoritarian power to subvert a democratic process. The vision exists within our own club. We have an unwritten rule that we don't talk about politics in Rotary which recognizes the impact that political division has on our membership. I suggest that we need to ask ourselves, why can't we talk about politics? Does one's political view create such animosity and hatred and prevent us from working together for the very reason that we joined Rotary? Today's program on inclusion is an examination of our own personal notion of acceptance of people, that are different from ourselves. It's my hope that by exploring the meaning of inclusion, we will have a greater understanding of the experiences of others, to have empathy for those that are different from us and have more tolerance and even understanding and acceptance of others. And so with that, I'd like to be able to start our meeting and go on with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Robin, I believe that you are going to do that for us if you could unmute. All right, everybody ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wonderful, thank you very much. Next up is our thought of the day, and I believe Michelle has our thought of the day. Well, I must tell you a little story first, because uh, about a half hour ago, Jeff called me and asked me to do the thought of the day. And uh, and I, I said, well, I'm, I'm not prepared. I'm on the road. And he said, well, I have a thought. So he, he read the thought to me, and I said, yes, I'll do it. I can pronounce all those words. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, so this is, a, this is a quote that's um, uh, Martin Luther King. It's very short, and a lot of times short messages are a lot easier to remember. So Martin Luther King said, we must accept finite disappointment, but we must never lose infinite hope. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. This is the first meeting of the month, and as such, we do uh, recognize birthdays and anniversaries. Will is cutting some deal today and was not able to make it, but he got me the information. And I'm going to go ahead and do, I guess the way he does, pick a number between one and 10. For Rotary birthdays, we have Min and Min Nguyen and Harry Hartman. I do not see either one of them. If you are waived, I don't see anybody so they pass. For anniversaries, we have Italo Calpestri. Italo Calpestri at 53 years. Did you join when you were five, Italo? (laughs) 
Hang on, let him unmute. I was six, Jeff. Uh oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Lilo, I want to. I think it's an amazing accomplishment, and thank you for all of the years and all of the service you've done for the Rotary Club of Alameda. It is greatly appreciated. And I thank Rotary for all the friendships that I've made in those fifty-three years. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, uh, Vanessa Cooper. At five years, and I do not see Vanessa, and then Michelle Ingram. Michelle, hello, Michelle, at seven years. Yep, so that's what we said, so we've got it. So between Michelle and Italo, I have picked out a number between one and 10. And so if, uh, let's see, Michelle, oh, you're drinking. So Italo, pick a number between one and 10. Six. Six. Michelle? Seven. Michelle has seven. The number was, you probably can't see that, the number was two. So, Italo, you will be getting a Starbucks gift card in the mail that will give you a down payment on one of their espresso drinks. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. You are welcome. All right. And of course, because it's birthdays and anniversaries, Harry has our song of the day to commemorate all of us, all of those celebrating birthdays. Harry, take it away. Okay, Jeff, uh, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to play uh, that silly birthday song just for you, Italo, and for the others who have rotary birthdays. Are you seeing this okay? Yes. Yeah. Well, we we see blue. Yeah, okay, here we go. Happy birthday, real Rotarians with real Rotarian spirit. All right, moving on, we are introducing visiting Rotarians. And I don't believe I see any visiting Rotarians. If I, if you are a visiting Rotarian, I have to scroll between two screens. So I don't see any. And otherwise we move on to guests of Rotary. And I will take this time to introduce my guest, Verna Castro. And is Snowflake around? I didn't, don't see Snowflake. No, so Snowflake was her cat, and I guess has decided that Rotary's not her cup of tea. 
Anyway, welcome, Verna. Dee, would you like to do a just quick little hi and tell us a little bit about yourself? I don't want to put you on the spot, so you can just shake your head no. I just, yes, I'll, I'll say hi, of course. Uh, I'm Verna. So I'm a program administrator um, in San Francisco Unified School District. And I actually ran for the Alameda School Board. And I'm so happy to be a part of Rotary and to learn about what you all got going on. I heard a lot of good things about you. Um, and I'm also involved in the community, um, trying to uplift uh, primary Pacific Islanders and um, other, other folks. So glad to be here in community. Fantastic, thank you. thank you. Thank you. And then we will do a formal introduction for Jen, but Jen, you wanna wave real quickly and say hello? Hello, looking forward to connecting with everyone. Thanks Very for good, me. thanks so much. All right. And with that, we move on to Rotary announcements. Does anybody have any announcements? Uh, yes, Harry. Yeah, I see Vincent is not with us, so I'll make the announcement that uh, Vince and I discussed. You all should have received a uh, an email from Club Runner uh, asking if uh, if any others would like to volunteer for this Saturday's Christmas tree pickup of Troop Eleven. Did uh, can someone confirm that you did get that email? Mm -hmm. You got it, Bill. Okay. So I'm, it didn't come back to me. That's why I was concerned. Uh, Bill and I uh, are are going to uh, volunteer on Saturday. Uh, we're looking for anybody else uh, who has a truck and would, would drive. Um, so if there's any amongst you uh, that have that uh, resource, uh, please contact Vince. Uh, and Vincent Wu's uh, contact information is on that email that was sent out by Club Runner. Uh, if we have enough trucks and uh, uh, helpers, we can get it all done in one day. It's Troop 11's biggest fundraiser. Typically, we, we pick up close to a thousand trees in Alameda, and and uh, and it means. Uh, close to $10,000 in revenue to the troop, which carries a lot of its program for the year, in addition to what Rotary contributes. So uh, contact Vince if you're able to volunteer. If you're not, if you cannot volunteer, or if you, and if you have a tree to pick up, or if you'd simply like to make a donation, uh, the website is also in that email. And uh, if you do make a donation, they'll ask you for a scout to attribute your, your donation to. And uh, Miles Grayson, which will be on the list when you uh, go to pay, pay uh, your donation, uh, has helped us in the past with our website. So if you don't have any other scout that you'd like to attribute your donation to, you can attribute it to Miles, as I have done. So thanks for your support of the troop and for volunteering if you can. Great, thanks, Harry. Um, any other Rotary announcements? <clears throat> yeah. So Phil, I just want to double check that because of the current rules on COVID-19, oh, Phil Gardner is leaving, so he won't be able to answer that question. I'm assuming that we will not be doing any cleanups through January until the restrictions on gatherings are uh, lifted. We try to go out once a month to the Gene Sweeney open space and do a little weeding and cleanup around the Rotary Pavilion, which we paid for. And with that, our, I don't see any other announcements. So Rotary-based announcements, I just want to let everybody know the Rotaform went out yesterday. And one of the things that is in the Rotaform is a link to the 40 minutes of our 100th anniversary celebration. I figured I just couldn't at the end of the year not do something. So um, I was able to twist the mayor's arm and she came in and said some very nice things about us. And then there's a little bit of the his, some of the history of the club that we were able to put together. 
Uh, also, uh, she said she was going to work on getting us a resolution that the council would pass uh, recognizing our 100th anniversary and the service that we have provided to the community. So keep our fingers crossed that will something that will come down the road for us. And with that, um, I guess we would be on to fines. Yes, I don't see me. I see Michelle. Unmute yourself, Michelle. You are yeah. the first one up. I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that um, how therapeutic it is to be here in, in John Lib's backyard. We're safe distance there. I stopped at uh, Dragon Rouge and got us a salad and zipped over here. And, and this is really, it's a lot of fun. I'd encourage you to, if you have a, a you know backyard like this, to get together face to face with another Rotarian. It makes a big difference. I'll pay 20 bucks for that. Wonderful. Five. Twenty? No, 20, you pay 25. John, John wants to pay 25. He just volunteered for 25. <laughs> so, yeah, so John, you know, I think if, if there's going to be a donation, I'd like to be able to hear it from the person who's going to be writing the check as opposed to their designee. Except the challenge. No, 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 wrong. So, so I, 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 will, I will be 25 as, as well in honor of my fantastic lunch date today. So, and, uh, and I do have a big backyard. So yeah, we could, we probably could do three back here. Yeah, yeah, if anybody's interested in the future. Um, it was supposed to be a wine date, but then I stopped drinking wine in January on the weekdays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, only on weekdays. <laughs> Very small. Excellent, okay. I've got floor. I, I also want to add a donation as, as well in honor of your sweet dog Bear, who I know passed away this week. And I'm so deeply sorry. Um, he's a beautiful dog, and you guys had an amazing relationship. So I want to make a hundred dollar donation in his honor to Rotary, and I'm going to match that to Paz as well. Thank you, John. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Alice, and then Harry. Okay. I just want to pay um, hundred dollars. Oh no, not hundred, twenty, twenty dollars <laughs> 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 to honor Jeff for your effort and um, you put together uh, the hundred anniversary beautifully. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Alice. I can't tell you how much fun it was doing the research on that though. And I think I have to give a big thank you to the Alameda Museum. Uh, which we actually gave $500 to because they provided some of the background for the early stuff, but um, it was great. And I'm glad we had the opportunity. So I hope everybody will check that link out to be able to see how we celebrate it. Thank you, Alice. Harry? Uh, yeah, and I will donate uh, $20 uh, to scholarship uh, for uh, just, just to celebrate the new year and the new hope we have and the new opportunity to serve as Rotarians. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, I see a hand, Karen, that, that was a hand, right? I just want to make sure, Karen Kenny. Yes, I also wanted to um, pay a fine to honor Bear, um, $100. Uh, Jeff, I know how special he was to you and loved getting his Bear's view of the city on PEEP. So, um, hundred dollars in memory of a bear. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. I think then it is 1250. Well, we might be starting just a bit early. Jen, thank you for signing on a little bit earlier. We appreciate that. So uh, let me give you a quick introduction. So first of all, I have to say, I met Jen at one of her, uh, on Zoom only, at one of her introductory lunch meetings um, where she discussed concepts of inclusion, diversity. It was very general, but I found her to be very insightful, very informative, and was able to convey some of these really more difficult concepts on a really down to earth basis that we could all understand. So with that said, 
Jen has participated in the Oakland education system for over 25 years, beginning as a teacher and later as the superintendent of schools. She has always seen her primary role as a coach to those interested in creating a liberated and racially just world where everyone can thrive. She founded Evolve Coaching and Consulting based on the idea that the future is anti-racist and inclusive. Today, she will explore the distinctions between being welcoming and inclusive within the organizational setting. So Jen, with that, I'm going to turn this over to you and a big applause. Thank you, first meeting of the year. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. It's really, really, I've never been to a Rotary meeting before and I really love all of your like rituals. And the, I, when you said like any fines, I was all, ooh, they're gonna call people out for having like owing a fine. And then but to hear that it's actually a moment where people gift and that was really moving. It was really a neat, neat ritual. So thank you for including me today. Um, I, yes, so um, Jeff kind of did a bit of an introduction and um, of both me and how he and I connected. And I've spent some time with both Jeff and Will and also with the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. And um, that's the work that kind of informed today's um, presentation. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, can, everyone can hear me. If there's any problems, like wave me down. Um, I'm gonna uh, share my screen here. Um, just a second. Yes, this one. And all right. So I wanted to put forward just at the very beginning a few agreements that I ask that we uphold as a community today because we are talking about some some. Um, work and beliefs that could um, be differently triggering or impactful for different people. And I think especially in light of this actual moment in our country's history, given the events that transpired yesterday, and also just all of the political and racial unrest that's continued into today as well. Um, Jeff and I also talked about uh, to pause, not to pause this work today. And I, I really do commend you for not pausing and, and continuing. I also want to offer, um, Jeff and I could coordinate a time for folks. I'm happy to hold space for people to come together and do a little bit of like breathing and deep healing um, and just conversation around what's happening. Um, if that's of interest to folks, maybe Jeff, if you maybe gauge interest, if people are interested, just let me know. And I'm happy to, to put something together for like a 45 minute or however long people want um, for to hold a, have a container specific to that um, processing that people are looking for. Um, so you and I can connect about that, but I wanted to put that out there. Um, so uh, the agreements I'm putting forward are an ask to be fully present um, upholding confidentiality, which in this space, I just ask that if people share things that once the meeting is over, they are allowed to stay, that, that content is allowed to stay here um, because it gives people a little bit of freedom to, to share their current thinking about things and not worry about it um, going out in the world. Um, for folks to speak their truth, which, which um, both means it through honesty, but also um, from your own perspective and not falling into any temptation to speak for people who might look like you or be like you, but just to speak your own personal truth, um, seeking to understand. And then this last one is really important in this work because it's not super tied up with a bow all the time. And so being open to non-closure and discomfort, we have been taught that those things are bad but actually they're both really necessary. And they're sometimes indicators of our learning, of our growth, of our need for growth. So just to kind of know that that might be something that comes up a little bit today, I don't anticipate it being a huge thing, but anytime I do work around race or identity or diversity or inclusion, I like to start with this. So if I could just get a thumbs up and I'll just quick scroll through that folks feel okay. And if anyone, wave down if anybody has like a question or a concern. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Can I see thumbs up from folks that like, yes, we're good. Thank you. All right. 
I see thumbs up. I think that's everyone. Some folks have their cameras off, which is fine. Um, all right. So um, the other thing is I am not great. I know that there's raising hand buttons and stuff. Um, at any moment, if you have a question or anything, please just unmute and ask because it's hard for me to see all of the screens. Um, I can't see all of you at one time and my screen. So just if you want something, just unmute and say so. All right. So to date, the work of the DEI committee that I've been loosely involved with and also with Jeff and Will, I wanted to just raise up kind of how we got here today. Um, and it really started with um, a deep dive into the four-way test and how the four-way test has really provided a foundation for the Alameda Rotary to really be a space that's welcoming and be a space that is prepared and grounded in some foundational elements of inclusion and anti-racism. Um, there's also, uh, I believe you all have seen, there's a statement that the Alameda Rotary has put out and it is a statement of inclusion and anti-racism that outlines the, the importance and the, the belief that Alameda Rotary is putting specifically in taking action toward more inclusion and more anti-racist efforts. Um, there was also a survey that the DEI committee sent out for to folks and overwhelmingly when we looked at that data, the, the word welcoming was said so many times and we're going to dig into that a little bit more today that welcoming is, is an aspect of inclusion um, and that we can also shift a little bit deeper into inclusion as we grow with the nuance of that word. Um, and the final thing is that being inclusive is really important to Alameda Rotarians, Rotarians. And, and I think that's really important too, because it means that you'll put in the work to really embody inclusion so that your membership reflects the diversity of the city and that this idea of welcomingness really grows into an inclusive environment. Um, so that's kind of where we are. And then today, um, oh, all right. And then the other thing is that um, I think there's some really important connections to the Alameda uh, Rotary mission statement, um, which is on your screen. We provide services to, uh, let me just put this down there. We provide service to others, promote integrity and advance the world understanding, goodwill and peace through our fellowship of business, professional and community leaders. Um, and so I think that like this idea of being inclusive and anti-racist both builds on this mission statement and also the desires of the community. And I want to delve in today to the nuance um, by leaning into our learning edge. So this is just a diagram that shows this comfort zone area in the middle is where we are naturally. It's just where we're comfortable most. Our competency zone is things that we've learned that we always already have developed a level of mastery of that we feel competent. Then there's that outer red zone of a discomfort zone. And actually the discomfort zone makes our emotions trigger and our affective filter go up such that it actually can be very prohibitive to learning. And so our goal today is actually to live on that learning edge, just at the edge of the discomfort zone. That, and that's the thing that actually helps grow our competency zone. So we're gonna do that by delving, oops, sorry, delving into the nuance of inclusion. And I thought we could start with um, this metaphor. So I'm going to show you two different kind of table di tables set for dinner. And I would love for you to write in the chat. So if, if folks um, find the chat button, let me just see here. Um, I'm going to bring you all back on screen so I can see you. So either in the chat or just go ahead and unmute. How does it feel to be at a family dinner or a best friend's house for dinner? How do you feel as you're getting ready? What kinds of conversations do you have? What do you wear? How formal is it? How much can you be yourself? So either, oops, holler out or put in the chat. I see the chat. Okay. Excited to go. It feels easy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? 
I mean, especially in the pandemic, it would be really exciting to go because we can't go right now. <laughs> so contrast that. Oh, I see another one. Thanks, Barnett. Let me just move my chat button over here. Yes, there's like, yes, check-ins on family, health, and wellness of individuals, positive anticipation. Ha, ah, yes, depends if we'll be there. I kind of purposely put a friend's house for dinner because I do think that sometimes family dinners are not always smooth running. Um, but yes, it can be more intimate. Anyone else want to chime in? So contrast the, the family dinner or like the best friend's house for dinner with this next dinner that I kept flipping to accidentally, how does it feel to be at a new friend's house for dinner? Like someone that you are just, it's your first dinner at their house um, and you, you don't know them very well. Nervous, that was my first word too. <laughs> Hopeful, uh-huh. Yeah, self-conscious, thanks, yeah. A little careful, no politics, yes. Would put a different level of filtering, yes. Yes, this is great, you guys, yes. Excited to know them better, yes. Curious, yes, love it. Great. So, I'm gonna, I navigate my little screen here, okay. So, there's a lot of commonalities between inclusive and welcoming. They both feel happy. Oh, I see another one here popping in. Building connections, yes. Anxious on edge, yes. So they can both feel happy. They can both feel social. They can both feel warm. Um, they both have norms, right? There's like norms of behavior within your family dynamics, within your best friend family dynamics, within the dynamics of like a new friend. And, and we kind of saw some of that reflected in the comments just now. And what I wanted to do was think about with, with, a, with a family or a, a very close best friend, we tend to feel more relaxed and accepted and maybe being able to be ourselves and valued as I am and definitely interconnected that way of like, I'm valued to, valued to them, they're valuable to me, we're, we're deeply connected. Whereas on the more formal side or the less familiar side, we feel a little more alert, which we saw reflected, like maybe our filter, I love that, like the idea of filtering a little bit more. We might ask questions to kind of gauge folks' political views or views on the pandemic before launching into something of our own beliefs about them. We might feel a little more nervous, a little more performative, definitely connected but maybe not interconnected, that like symbiotic back and forth isn't there yet, right? And so as an analogy, I thought this could be helpful as we think about at the Rotary, how to move from welcoming, which is really important, toward inclusive or more inclusive. The thing in the data showed that, that there wasn't an inclusive element. It's just that we wanna expand that so that it's, it's um, more robust. So some of the ways I think that um, the Rotary is already set up to become or be more inclusive is actually leveraging the four-way test. And as I was looking at it, I was thinking about, you know, um, I think that um, all of our own just social conditioning and family conditioning um, influences the way that we see the world. And so in the four-way test, I thought, what would it feel like to kind of add a little prompt of like, how will I know? So when you ask, is this the truth? Like, is this truth? Also just kind of in the back of your mind wondering, how will I know if it's really the full truth? Same with, is it fair to all concerned? How will I know? Do I need to ask other people? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? This idea of how will I know just kind of challenging our own selves and the ways that we see the world, it might mean we have to be in more conversation with more people, right? Or that we might need to do some reading or who knows, just to kind of expand our views. But that was my first thought when Jeff and I were talking because the four, I, I'd never heard of the four-way test before. And I think it's an incredible tool. Um, 
And so that was one thought. The other one is that that actually was Jeff's idea was just to come up with some general like do's and don'ts around inclusivity. And so I, I have done a lot of reading and learning about this work. And um, I, I thought this might be a helpful tool also, like five inclusive actions. So one is listening without interrupting, right? There's a lot of conditioning about like the person who speaks first is smartest, or if you have an idea, you have to like urgently get your idea out there. And just in moments, can you check yourself and listen without interrupting? Another offering is to see differences in experiences, both as valid and also as value add. Let me just check the chat because I see a, uh -huh. for me being a good listener, learning about the individual, lean in and engage. Yes, I love that, yes. And so this idea around differences, both as valid and also as value add, honoring the validity that everyone's experience is not mine. And so when people say things or share things that feel really different than my experience, I wanna make sure that I honor them as their, their, their real experience, their real lived experience and as valid. And also as value add by growing the perspectives that we are able to consider and be in connection with. I just was um, watching a, um, not a podcast, but like a little clip and a, a woman was talking about the, the, the ways that the country's history of redlining still does play out in the ways that certain neighborhoods are more um, segregated than other neighborhoods. And that generally speaking, there, there are a lot of people who really mostly only interact with people who look like them, racially, age-wise, socioeconomically. And so the Rotary is an awesome opportunity to expand that and, and really have interactions with a much broader group of people. Um, and so this idea of, of valuing at, as value add um, and the richness of different experiences. Um, this third one, Focusing on impact over intent speaks to sometimes when harm happens. So as we all build our own practices of being inclusive and also of being anti-racist, we make mistakes. We say words that are outdated or we, um, we might not believe something or we might have a different experience and it causes harm. And instead of feeling defensive or focusing on the fact that I didn't mean to cause harm, shifting the focus to actually the impact that my words or actions had and taking responsibility for that is a way to really be more inclusive. Two more, receiving feedback with grace instead of defensiveness. So kind of related to number three. And then the final one is be willing to be uncomfortable so you can learn. Right, so that idea of staying on our learning edge in this newer environment for some of us where widespread racial awakening is, is, is really loud right now. Um, and that might be uncomfortable. And it's also an opportunity for us to learn and to really kind of push back on our conditioning again that like uncomfortable is an indicator of something bad, but actually maybe being uncomfortable is an indicator that we're like learning into something great. Um, so those are my kind of five inclusive acts. Um, in the chat are hollering out two uh, um, things. Any questions about anything I said? And also just what's coming up for you? What's resonating? Um, what other offerings do you have that you want to put forward? anything that was a reminder or something new? Because I, I didn't want it to be too basic, but I also didn't want to be too <laughs> radical. <laughs> So maybe if you think about it's, I think it's different too on Zoom sometimes than it is. I know that the Rotary usually meets together in real life in real with real people. 
um, I see one person talking about being mindful of a shared conversation. That's a great word. Yeah. The back and forth of a conversation. Yes. I used to teach little kids and I used to tell them to strive for five. And that meant that when they did a pair share, they would strive to go back and forth between each other five times in the conversation. Yeah, um, I think microaggressions, I have lots of articles on them. I'm happy to share. I can kind of send a couple to Jeff. Um, microaggressions and um, Verna, if this is something that you have experience with that you wanna share, I welcome that. And also if you're asking from my perspective, I'm happy to share that too. Um, I think microaggressions are something really worth doing some, some learning about, especially from my, from my perspective as a white woman. Um, they are often things that I, as a white person, am not aware that I'm doing because I am so, uh, there's an analogy that's really powerful that um, like white conditioning or dominant culture conditioning, uh, the analogy is fish who are in water don't know that they're wet because they're just surrounded by water all the time. And so for white folks, it can be that way too. We don't realize the things that we're doing because we're surrounded by it all the time. And when you're not a member of that group, it can be painfully obvious. And so, so I think that there are some microaggressions that are often used as examples that um, cause harm, but there, I don't wanna like simplify. It can be a lot of different things. Saying things like um, to a person of color, like, wow, you speak good English. My husband is a Vietnamese American. He's lived here for like almost his entire life. Of course he has good English. He's, you know, almost a native speaker or and so this assumption that like not speaking or, or, or not having an accent is better, all these things. So that's kind of one example. Um, Verna, do you want to add either questions or also examples? No, no, I, I just, uh, I'm actually just listening to you. They're a good example. Okay. You know, from your experience. Yeah, I just, I think that like, there's lots of ways it's it, at the heart of it, it is subtle ways that I think people feel othered. For example, commenting on a black woman's hair. Well, no one comments on people's hair that's straight. So why would you comment on a black woman's hair? Like it's this idea that like, well, if, if this is, if it's normal to have white person hair and not normal to have black person hair, that feels othering. So I do, I would love to come back and talk more, or like I said, share readings about microaggressions. Cause I think it's really important work and, and really, um, really deep work because it, it like, again, that intent over impact idea is really loud often with microaggressions. Um, Karen, I see your hand raised. Do you want to chime in? I'm not, Karen, Kenny, I see that you have a hand up, but I don't know if that means you want to say something, but you're also not on camera. So I could come back to you. Yeah. Um, and I see in my chat too, okay, okay, thanks, Karen, um, that there's an ask for some um, thoughtful questions more helpful than declarations. Um, Harry, let me put you on the spot. Can you say a little bit more about what you mean? Yeah, am I unmuted now? Yes, thanks. Yeah. Um, to, to I guess it's it's a welcoming element, um, and maybe uh, and maybe a a trust building element to um, we're all fond of our opinions and we mm. love to state them at every opportunity but it it can degrade a conversation um, mm. it, it goes into the talking too much part of it too but uh, thoughtful questioning can mm. really bring out uh, uh, a will, uh, and and to to, to c communicate, and um, and a sharing of ideas, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and so it's 
it, it's it's be careful not to be dominant is probably mm -hmm. the main thrust. Mm -hmm. Thank you for expanding. I wasn't sure if you were talking to me, asking for me to have more thoughtful questions and not <laughs> declaring things. So I wanted to make sure no, that no, no, that in, I responded in, to <laughs> in, in, in conversation with yeah. others and particularly yeah. new acquaintances. Yeah. Um, uh, more is gained through thought. More might be gained through thoughtful questioning right. than just. Yeah, I love that. I feel like coming from a place of curiosity and compassion draws people in and makes them feel seen. Um, and and kind of going back to those that metaphor, coming from a place of how can I really honor this whole person and and so that they can um, feel safe here and included here. Um, Yeah, it's a change, uh, an exchange of opinions can uh, can can lead down a <laughs> a wrong path. Uh, yeah, when, when you start to drive your your stakes in the ground with each other, mm -hmm. especially if you're yeah. meeting, so, if you're work, if you're engaged with someone um, that you're seeking accord with. Mm -hmm. And I think for the rotary, just as you guys kind of go forward to hold those metaphors of when new members come into your space, they probably feel more like the formal dinner table, right? Then they feel, especially, where am I? I want to get, oh, I don't see the name coming up. Forgive me that I have forgotten your name. For some reason, it's not showing. The person who's been in rotary for 53 years, which is incredible. At this point, you may not feel like it's a, a formal table anymore, right? It might actually feel really inclusive to you because you've a history here. And so how can folks who have that, when new people join, help those people feel included in such a way that it becomes their table too, right? And less formal and less nervous or um, um, filtered. And so how can we like reduce that sense of formality? Because actually on the call today, part of your ritual, it was so clear, both in the moving um, fines that people donated and, and that was really moving. I teared up. There's clearly connection among you. And so that can be a huge, it's a gift I'm sure to all of you. And also how can that be extended in a way that brings people in instead of feels like, oh, this is already a thing that like, I'm not really part of. And I'm not saying that that is happening, but just like those are the, that was kind of my hope for the metaphor is that it can be in the back of your mind as you, as you grow as a rotary and grow in your influence, you know, as civic leaders in our city that we really need right now. Any other, um, thoughts or um, things that are resonating from folks. Thanks for the participation. I wasn't sure what to expect on a Zoom call. So I appreciate it. I, I'm much more a fan of engaged dialogue than a lecture. So thank you for engaging. So I think, um, I, um, so for some next steps, I think one, I will definitely, I can send, um, Vern, I'm happy to send directly to you, or I also can send to Jeff through, and then to you. Um, I have a couple of really nice, nice articles. Actually, maybe Jeff, if I share them with you, can you just share them with this whole group? Because other folks might also be interested. So I have two articles about microaggressions that I really like. So um, I will send those and forgive me, if I don't write things down, I pretty much immediately forget them. So I'm gonna have to write and talk um at the same time anyway yes jen we would be able to do that and you know potentially it could be part of a ongoing program where we Great. um develop yeah. continue to develop the idea of inclusiveness love it i would love that yeah i i really really am moved i think alameda is such an amazing city my son goes to school here and i have purposely put him in schools where the diversity is unlike I experienced as a kid. And also I have a sister who has three kids. Their school only had one kid of color between my nephew and niece's entire grades. 
And when I go to pick up my son at school, he went to Lum before it was closed and then he went to Wood and now he's at Encinal. You look around those schools and there's not a dominant group. Like there's a, such rich diversity. And he actually, don't tell him because he gets embarrassed because he's a teenager. He said to me once, being white, it's really hard. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> My husband about fell over. And he said, you know, if you're white, it means both of your parents are plain white. And that's really rare. Because in his experience, it is more likely to be mixed or a black or brown person. And I love that. Like his world is that diverse. And, and I think Alameda has that. And the more we can really come together as a community through Rotary, through other organizations in the city, I just, I think it's really exciting that we, that you as road Rotarians are taking this seriously and wanting to be inclusive. Um, but so sorry for my little soapbox, but microaggression article I will do. I would love to continue to figure out different ways we could work together as you guys continue your learning and work in this area. Um, and then the third thing, again, I'll go through Jeff. I really will, am serious about holding space. If folks want to come together and I can put together a bit of a structure for some time to just process what's happening right now um, with um, the things in Washington, DC. I think that this is a time that people really need each other. And so I, and it's so isolating in the pandemic. So please, Jeff, if you and I can coordinate offline and maybe set a date and a time and gauge how many folks would be interested in doing that. Does that sound good? Sure, yeah, ab absolutely. Also, um, I, obviously, if there's any questions, we want to allow that, but um, also would appreciate comments uh, from people and any areas that they would like the DEI committee to explore or have Jen come back and talk about specifically. Yeah, I would love that too. Thanks. Yeah, it's very complicated and, and very uncomfortable. I know so, I keep telling Jeff that that uncomfortable feeling means you're on to something good. <laughs> and he doesn't believe me yet. He said today, you have to keep telling me that. <laughs> oh, I, I had spoke briefly with Jen this morning because I was, I would say, quite disturbed about the events that had happened yesterday and how we might go forward today. And all I said was, I have a huge knot in my stomach that I cannot get rid of right now and don't yeah. know how. So, yeah. Um, and I guess she keeps telling me that's comfortable, so. <laughs> it's just important information. It's right, it's real. It's like, take deep breaths, take care of ourselves, go for walks, eat wholesome, healthy food, because times are really not easy right now in lots of different ways for lots of people. Yeah. So yes, microaggression article. Yes, I love next steps. Um, fill up the chat, folks. What are some, because I feel like this work can really go in a lot of directions. And it would be helpful to know what feels like the right next step from actual people in the group for this group. I think, yeah, that, that would be great. You know, another one that I think comes to mind is, uh, and it's a term that's used a lot, and I'm not sure it's well understood. Um, and I'm even prepared to give an example. And that is um, the impact of implicit bias. I think we all pretty much know the, the, the surface bias and things like that. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly share an example because I thought I was actually pretty good. I'm a 20 year mediator with lots of role plays. I'm also an attorney that we are required to take bias training every three years. The bias training for attorneys is not that good, but they make us do it anyway. But through the mediation training, it's far more subtle. And I was doing a mediation in Alameda County Superior Court it's the unlawful detainer or evictions. And uh, what happened was two women of color in their mid sixties came up to the table and talked to the person in charge and said, we would like to try and mediate this situation of not payment of rent and all the rest of that. And then the person said, well, you need to talk to the other party or we're willing to go to the other party to ask if they would be willing to also resolve this outside of court. And as it turns out, yes, they were willing to do that. And the gentleman that came up was in his early 50s. And as I described him, kind of Norwegian white. So very fair complected, almost way beyond blonde hair and almost yellow, um, or almost white. And so we took them into the mediation room and I had to go get some, inf uh, some documents for them to sign. 
And when I came back in, I went into the room and I said, okay, um, now who is the landlord? And the two women raised their hands and said, we are the landlords. And so we had the, we did all the paperwork, got it all out. I got it all collected back. We started the mediation and they asked that they didn't feel comfortable enough having their initial conversation with him in the room. So we, it, it's typical, it's called caucusing. And I assured him that he would have his own individual opportunity and he left the room. And the first thing that I was confronted with was one of the women who said, you thought he was the landlord. And um, I can tell you, Jen, that uncomfortable feeling that you talked about. Yeah. yeah, well, it was literally a gut punch and I felt like I was in the corner not being able to even catch my breath. And I try to go back to say, what did I say? What did I do? And I don't remember any of that, but at the end of the day, did I in some way think because of the diversity of those parties that one person was and one person wasn't? And to this day, I don't know what I did, what I said exactly, but it just goes to show how much more work, even with somebody with some training and experience, you have to go through. And it sneaks up on you in ways you would not yeah. even begin to believe. I so appreciate you sharing that example. Oh, yes. I just and it's also an part. example of impact versus intent. That was not your intent. And that was not the thing. The impact was the thing. Yeah. And, you know? the, and so the, the part that scared me, Jen, was I didn't know what I did to create the impact, though. Yeah. You know that if it, I could offer this would be my offering. I think by asking, you may always ask who's the landlord. That might be standard procedure, right? I would imagine it is possible as black women that landed because of their own um, context in the world and the way that, that the dominant culture treats black women that landed as, I don't think it's you. Yeah. Like it actually wasn't, like I said, it could a hundred percent be that that is always the first step in your process. But because of the life experience as those women, it is also very possible that, that the way that that landed was in that whole context of how many black women property owners are there? Is that the, is that the default belief? Like that's what they're coming in with. That would be, that was what I thought as you were sharing. I hope that's okay to say, but I hope that's- No, yeah. it, it, it's fine. It's one of those things that I just, I, I do occasionally yeah. share it because it was um, just so striking and yeah, um, we, we were able to get through the we were able to get through the the mediation, but um, yeah, it was it was a lot of work. It was a tremendous and yeah. just a lot of self thought. It was a very long drive from the courthouse back to my house. You know, yeah. and I still go go over that. So that's why I think this work yeah. is really important. I appreciate you yeah. being here um, to help guide us. Yeah, I see a raised hand. Yeah, Let me go ahead. Yeah, we don't have time to discuss this, but a, but a thought came to mind, Jeff, when you were, uh, we've been talking about how we interact with others, but interacting with ourselves, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the book uh, Blink by Malcolm yes. Gladwell and how we instantly and, uh, and unknowingly form judgments yes. very quickly. Yes. And yes. aren't even aware of them. Yes. Um, and in that case, um, it's possible that, that you had some instinctive judgments already forming up, uh, but also they did too. And um, I don't know how you deal with that subject area, but it is, it is real. And yes. it does influence how we interact with others. Yeah, you know, Harry, that's a very good point. And um, I, I can tell you the only thing that I did in my, my situation, and it was only because of so many years of role playing, mm -hmm. was don't be defensive. That one of the things as mediators, regardless mm -hmm. of the reality of the situation, we own it because mm -hmm. it's that other person's perception. Mm -hmm. 
And mm -hmm. if you don't have the trust of that person, you, you cannot be a mm -hmm. me that there is no way that you're able to do that because it's built on trust. Mm -hmm. So, but I, but I cannot tell you that my knee jerk reaction, the first things that sh should have jumped out of my mouth was, oh, I didn't intend to do that, right? And yet, yeah, and, but, but again, that is the natural, just yeah. the natural reaction. Yeah, and then I keep looking at your number five on the screen, Jen, about uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if any anybody has any other experience, it'd be nice to go share. next or yeah. Yep. Anything to share. Hmm. So I don't, I don't see any, I don't know. Do you see any more Jen? I don't, I don't think so. I just had this last quote from Maya Angelou, do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. I feel like that's a nice, just as we can, it gives us permission to keep learning and keep doing better. Um, and I, that just came to me as I was planning this because it feels very Rotarian, just based on my interactions with folks so far. The DEI committee has been great. Jeff and Will have been great. This was a lovely session. I really appreciate the time with you all. And look forward to just future opportunities to engage together on this. Um, so, um, Jeff, um, I will definitely send you the article, um, and maybe I'll e we can email back and forth around how to coordinate if people want to come together again to hold some space to just process what's going on. Does that work for you? Uh, well, you know, I think so because we, you know, we did receive at least the one email, one email yeah. that thought it was important, and I think there's probably other people. I know it's also important for me. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else, just to be able to say what I'm yeah. feeling about what is happening right now. And there's at least one, and I'm sure there are several yes. other people out there Great. that would welcome the opportunity. And you know something, even if it's only the three of us, yes, I think right. it is still important. And then if anybody has any other topics they would like us to address, you know, we have mm -hmm. microaggressions, um, we have implicit, implicit bias. bias. Yeah. The, even the internal thing with Blink, I think that can connect definitely to both implicit bias and microaggressions, actually. The brain piece of this is fascinating. So yes, that could work too. Well, hopefully then, you know, Jen, let's work with Alice on a potential follow-up program and find out what the schedule's like so we can do that. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so good. much for the time, everyone, and for this oh. commitment. I really appreciate getting to know you all. Jeff. Thank you. Jeff. Somebody called Jeff. Yes. It's Italo. Yes, sir. I want to point out that there's a typo in the uh, quotation there in the second line until is spelled in incorrectly. Okay. So Jen, you're muted. I'm I, I, I need to hire you, Italo, for my details <laughs> person. <laughs> I did some posting last night and spelled a word wrong as well, and I'm disappointed in it. Yes, I see it now. So could, <laughs> I, will, could I can't change it while it's on the screen, but I will change it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. If you would, to, if could you show the uh, the five items again? I want to take a picture of it so I have yep. it. Let me see here. Hang on one second. There you go. I can also send this slide deck. Jeff, if you want to send it out to people, they, they, you can send it out to people. Yeah, that would be good. Great. Sure, that would be wonderful. Yeah, if we could do the slides. Yeah. That's, an important, that's a very important over. slide. Yes, I agree. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and Ilo, you're getting shout outs um, in the chat as well for your attention to detail. <laughs> 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 wonderful. All right. Well, uh, again, please feel free to contact me personally by email. If there's um, any topics, anything more you'd like to explore, have Jen explore with us. And if not, it is 1.30 and I think it is time to go start the rest of our day. It doesn't look like the sun is out, but at least it's bright. Good time to maybe go take a quick walk, get some fresh air and then continue your day. So I really wanna thank Jen for being here. Um, and starting us on this journey of inclusiveness. Yeah, great presentation. Yeah. Thank you, great meeting. We we'll look forward to seeing Thank you again. Thank you so much, everyone.
Yeah. Thank you all for staying. And with that, go out Take and care, have everyone. a great day. Stay safe Hello. and healthy. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye.